Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we are going to solve problem of the day on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So today's problem is find all distinct subset sums, right? So as usual, first of all, we'll be understanding the problem statement, then the logic part, and then we'll be having a look on the code part, right? So before proceeding uh, with the problem statement, with the video, make sure to subscribe my channel. If you haven't subscribed the channel till now, it will really motivate me to create more such content for you. And I believe that the uh, content that we, are, that we are putting on our channel, it is going to be helpful for you, right? We are continuously putting job opportunities and placement related information on the channel. So make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon as well. You can follow our, you can join our telegram community too. The link is there in the description sir. So now let's get started with the problem state. The problem says given a set of integers, find all distinct sums that can be generated from the subsets of the given set, right? So that's what we have to do. We are having a set of integers and we have to generate all distinct, right? So sums should not be duplicate. That's what the thing is. Now, if they have mentioned distinct, so can you think like what we can use here to make sure that whatever sums we are getting, they should be distinct. We can use set, right? So that can be generated from the subsets of the given set. So here we are having this nums. nums we are having two elements, one and two. So with these two, how many uh, number of a possible number of sums is possible, right? How many number of distinct sums that can be generated from one and two, right? So the first thing is like if we are not choosing, see, it's it's more of a selection based problem. Like either you will choose an element or not. So if we are not choosing uh, any number, one or two, nothing we are choosing. So the sum would be zero itself. Now let's say you choose one, you chose one, but not two. So um, the sum would be one. Now if you not uh, like if you didn't choose this one but you choose two right so then sum is going to be two if we chose both these numbers then the sum is going to be three right so the possible uh, sums that we can have from this to number one and two are zero one two three let's have a look on the next example so here uh, nums equal to one two three and this is the sums that we can get so if we are not choosing any of them one two three we'll be getting zero if we are choosing one so we'll be getting one if we are choosing just two so we'll be having two if we are choosing three so we'll be having three if we are choosing one and two so we'll be having three right so again duplicates are not allowed right so that's why we have just just this three only right so now if we choose one and three so we'll be having four right if we choose two and three so we'll be having five and if we choose all these three elements three to one so we'll be having six right so this is what we have so whatever task is that we have to complete the function distinct sum which takes nums as input parameter and returns a list containing the distinct sum in increasing order right so that's what it is like we have mentioned the expected time complexity and space complexity too so what could be done now you can see here we are making a decision to take a number or not so are you able to think like what we can do here I think most of you must be able to that we can use recursion, right? So let's say we are having the elements one, two, three. Okay, so first, let's say if you took for one, if we are not going to take one, so sum will be zero. If we are taking one, so sum will be one. Now for two, if you are not taking two, sum will be zero. If you are taking two, sum will be two. Zero plus two, two, right? Now here, if you will see, so again, here also we have to take decision for two. So if you are not taking two, sum will be one. If we are taking two, sum will be three. For three. Now, if we are taking three or not. So if we are not taking three, sum will be zero. If we are taking three, sum will be three. Here also, if you are not taking three, sum will be two. If we are taking three, sum will be five. Here, if you are now here also we have to make the decision right so if you are not taking three sum will be one and if we are taking three sum will be four here if you are not taking three right sum will be three and if you are taking three so three plus three will be having six right so this is what we got zero one two three zero one two three four five six and this is got repeated right this is got repeated so now we are not going to take it right because they want distinct sums they don't want the duplicate one so this is the possible number of sums that we can generate right and to make sure that we are having distinct sums we'll be using we'll be using what we'll be using set here okay we'll be using 
set here. Now what we can do, uh, as if you can see that uh, we repeated ourselves here, right? We repeated ourselves. That's for a particular sum if we have already calculated. Right? So here if you will see 0, 1, 2. So here from this pair of 1, 2, we can generate 3, right? And if you are not taking 1, not taking 2, just taking 3, then also what we can do, we can get 3, right? So what we can make sure that for a given instance, right? For a given instance, for a given index, if that sum we already got or not. If we have already got that particular sum up to a given index, for example, here from 0 to 2, right? So uh, there are two possibilities of generating that sum. If we are going with a combination of 1 and 2 or if just we are taking 3. So we are not going to do that calculation again, right? Because we have already got that sum, right? So we will be taking care of that because if you will go with the recursion part, right? So of course you are going to get TLE, right? So we'll be uh, we'll be doing what memoization here. So whatever for a given index, for a given index and for a given sum, if we have already uh, calculated, right? If we have already gone through that particular value, if, uh, if we have already calculated that sum, then we are not going to do it again. So how we can make sure? How we can um, memorize this part by keeping that uh what you can do like you can put a flag or something like this or basically as if in dp we do or we do right we can take an array uh, a 2d array of dp and we can mark that if right if we have already calculated the dp of i sum right and uh, if we have already calculated the value so for a given index and for a given sum, we can mark it as 1, 0 or like any value that you want, right? Basically 1, 2 or something because by default, uh, they all these values for uh, this DP array will be initialized with 0 in Java, right? So that's how it is. So hope you must have got the idea, right? Like how we are going to approach this problem. Otherwise, it's a, a basic simple uh, problem only based on recursion. But just the thing is that you have to involve memoization here. So that uh, we are not repeating ourselves and we are able to optimize our code as well. So that's what it is. Now let's have a look on the code part. So here you can see this is the function given to us. Now here we have taken this dp array, uh, right? So uh, so basically, and like if you will go through the constraints, so there were the possibilities. So here, uh, this many number of elements that we can have and see the row is going to be the number of elements and the column is going to be the sum. So that's what we can have the maximum value for uh, number of elements and sum as per the constant. So that's why I've taken this value. Now we have this set to keep track, like to make sure that we are having distinct sum only. Now here we are having this helper function to which we are passing this nums array, um, index, sum, set, as well as dp, right? So first of all, so here is the simple recursion call that we are making. So we have two choices, right? Either to take a particular element or not. So here, if you uh, see, if you are not taking a particular element, so we are not going to make any modification in the value of sum that would remain as it is and we'll move to the next index, right? If we are taking, right? So if we are taking, then what we're gonna do is that particular ith element, right? So you can see we have updated the value of sum as sum plus nums of i, right? Now to mark that, right? For, this, uh, for a given index uh, and for a given sum, right? So we have already calculated. So what we're going to do is we are going to put dp of i sum equal to 1. So that's what we are checking here that if dp of i sum is not equal to 0, it means we already have, we already calculated the sum. So we are simply returning, right? And what should be the base condition? The base condition should be like when i, the index that we have, right? If it is, it, it has become equal to that of the length of the nums array, right? So it means we have got the sum. So we are going to simply add this to our set and we're going to return, right? Now, as if we have to return an integer array here. So what we're going to do is we are taking an integer array here and whatever the elements that we do have, right? So we are storing these elements, elements in our set. We are storing these elements to our integer array and we have to return this in sorted order. So, so we are just simply sorting the array that we do have and we are simply returning it, right? So that's what the code for the logic that we just discussed. So thank you so much uh, everyone for watching. I have provided the code in the description so you can refer from there as well. Uh, thank you everyone. Keep learning, keep preparing.